Michael here with this, uh, Singleton Designs. Uh, I'm here with the Art Institute of Atlanta's Graphic Design Department. We're going to make a tutorial video on how to use a couple different tools in Illustrator and uh, show you how to use a couple different panels that I've learned how to use over the years. Um, it's going to help us make a trendy t-shirt design, something that's going to be print ready for you to take to a uh, print shop or to a t-shirt printing shop and uh, make a pretty decent looking shirt. So if you want to go here to your Trinity shirt downloads folder and we'll go ahead and get started. Like I said, just going to go over a couple basic tools that we feel is pretty necessary when working in Illustrator. So to start off, let's just look at what the final product is going to look like. You're going to click your final product folder. You're going to go here and you'll see what we're going to be doing in this video because the video is way too long to show you the whole entire shirt. We're just going to be making the back of the shirt today. And I have everything in your files folder, you'll see that. And if you want to see how to make the whole entire shirt, there will be another video following with the whole video. This is just going to be a short clip to show you how to make the back of the shirt. Um, you can see here it has a couple different patterns inside that uh, people tend to use. And we're going to be calling the company Southern Style. So, what you're going to do is go back to the original folder here. You're going to have that ready and open, so we're going to minimize that. Then you're going to go to Illustrator. In Illustrator, once it loads up and everything, you're going to go to File and New, not New from Template. You're going to go to File New. And what that's going to do is open up your document window. And what we're going to do in typing in the top is Trendy Shirt V1. That's going to let you know it's the first version. Trendy Shirt V1. And you're going to make one artboard. So you see one artboard there. And the size you want to make the artboard is going to be in inches, so you're definitely going to want to change your units to inches if it's not already there. Just go ahead and just take that to inches. That's what most people accept in the print industry. Then you're going to go to your width. You're going to make that 14. You're going to make your height 14 as well. And the reason for that is because print shops really tend to use bigger file sizes. They don't really like anything too small. Um, anything smaller tends to get pixelated. They sometimes have to recreate it. It just takes so much time. Go ahead and give them, give them a, a larger file size, even if it means, you know, biting a bit and getting maybe a, a larger zip drive or something like that to send it to them. So, uh, starting off, what you're going to do is uh, change your color mode to CMYK if you haven't already. And you're going to keep it at 300 ppi. That way you can get them the highest, uh, you know, digital file as possible. You're going to click OK. That's going to open up. See, I guess I only marked three. Let's go ahead and uh, take out the other two artboards here. And how I did that there, if you didn't notice, is uh, we'll take and uh, show you a couple command shortcut keys. But all you have to do to uh, bring up the artboard tool is what it's called, is Shift O. Shift O is going to bring up the artboard tool. It's going to make all of your artboards live. And pretty much an artboard is the area in which your artwork is being uh, made. And if you ever watch my videos here, you'll notice that uh, I go back and forth between tools really fast just by using the shortcut keys. So what I just did just now was Shift O. That's your artboard tool. And to get back to your regular mouse without having to scroll up to the top, all you have to do is press V. And that's going to automatically set that to for you. So to get started, what we're going to need is the EPS file for the bulldog shape. And that's pretty much just the shape of the bulldog itself. And then we're going to need the actual flag picture that goes behind the bulldog. So then you're going to go back to your Trendy Shirt Downloads folder. You're going to go to the back of the shirt. And I'll have the bulldog shape EPS here for you. And then the pattern. So first thing, let's go ahead and shift select every single pattern. That's going to mass select each one. You're going to drag those into Illustrator. And those are all going to come in on this one square. You won't notice it at first, but there are six pieces here. They're just all up under this one piece. And since you have that here, what you're going to have to do now is embed them in the file. That way, when you open it up later on, they become part of the actual Illustrator file itself. If you don't embed them, when you go to open it up maybe a day from now or whenever, and you take it to the printer, they're not going to be able to open the pictures unless you attach the Trendy Shirt download folder with the actual artwork file itself. Um, so to save you from all that headache, just go ahead and embed it. And like you see here, all the different patterns are right here, just waiting. And you just pull those apart there. Should be six total. 
All right, so once you have all of those and they're embedded, you're good to go on that. A couple panels I like to keep open. I, I keep open my transparency just in case I want to multiply something or something like that, change the opacity of a tool. Um, I also keep my swatches panel open, just a little quick shortcut key if I want to uh, change a shape into black, red, yellow, something like that. Um, and then also, too, I like to keep my Pathfinder open. That's another big one. A uh, Pathfinder essentially is just taking a shape and, uh, you know, just taking another shape in front of it and uh, cutting pieces out of that shape or to make new shapes. So if you see I ha highlighted both of these here, bam. Now I have, you know, this little oval rectangle to cut out. You know, if that's essential, I guess you can use that. <laughs> so now getting back started here, what we're going to do is open up your Trinity Shirt Downloads folder. And you've already got all of your patterns, so now all we need is a bulldog. So what we're going to do, instead of just double-clicking the bulldog or dragging him in, you're going to need to control select the bulldog or right-click, uh, depending on if you're using PC or a Mac. And you're going to scroll down to Adobe Illustrator CS6 or whatever CC you're working in. And then we're just going to click that there. It's going to open up its own file with the bulldog itself. And you can see here I've already made the shape for you. If you're not happy with the shape, you can go find another outline that's perfectly fine. I just like to use the Bulldog um, as I'm a Bulldogs fan. So then we're going to take and drag that to the front here. And we're going to keep that on the artboard. And pretty much all I did just now is you just hold down the Bulldog, you drag him up to the top here, and you can travel back and forth between files. And that makes it so much easier. It's something new that they added a couple illustrators back. It's, it's probably you know been a couple years now, but it's definitely a helpful function if you're trying to move back and forth between files with relative quickness. So you see here you have your bulldog. At this point, I would suggest going ahead and command copy and then command F, which is going to mean paste and place. And the reason for that is because later on we're going to use that bulldog at the same size to uh, keep um, to to put a stroke on the bulldog. So that is one thing you want to make sure you do is just command uh, paste in place and just keep a bulldog of the same size in the exact same place as where you're at. That way you don't have to line them up or anything like that because it can be kind of a headache. Um, so now what we're going to do at this point is uh, I would probably go ahead and open up your folder here and look at the example I made for the back here not this one actually it's gonna be this one here so we're gonna pull up the example that I made so you can see here on the back this is how it's kinda of laid out so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and drag that in as an example to use and essentially we're gonna try to make the exact same thing so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and make a rectangle out of the patterns that I had earlier so we'll go ahead and look here I think the ribbon was on this leg um, the uh, anchors the anchors were on another leg here just wanna make sure everything's lined up properly as well that's another big issue um, you want to make sure that you're not intersecting legs because if you look like you're intersecting legs it's going to look like a big wonky square and you definitely don't want that look. Um, so then the anchors go down here, you know, or you can always change it up a little bit. You don't have to do the exact same thing that I'm doing. Of course, you know, just keep it all. You want to make sure there's no white space in between and you want to make just a giant rectangle, just a rectangular shape here. Um, and as you can see, the bulldog looks kind of small. So what we're going to do is we have the other bulldog behind it. Let's go ahead and uh, select the bulldog and make him as large as you feel necessary to give it that distinct look that you probably you're probably looking for. Let's see. Make these patterns a little bit smaller. And shift drag these. And we're gonna make sure. Let's see, just make sure that these are all lined up here. And like I said, you don't want to do this, you don't want to have it like intersecting in between. You want to either have this completely covering the leg 
or completely not covering the leg. One of the things I did on this one is I need to make this all go up a little bit. Right about right there. Probably want to drag this guy a little bit closer. All right, so now you shouldn't have anything going in between any legs in particular, and you should have a pretty decent pattern going all around. So now that you got that, let's go ahead and select every single pattern. And what we're going to do is group them together, and that way we can just select one at a time, and they're all kind of one big shape. So see now, I can just click one, and they're all one big shape. Um, here you're going to select the bulldog, and then we're going to command copy in place, command F. We're going to take the top bulldog layer that we clicked, and we're going to highlight the patterns below, and then you're going to right click, and you're going to notice here it doesn't give you the clipping mask option, which is okay because we can just go up to the panel here, and the reason why it doesn't give you that is because the drop down list is too large already, so they didn't want to add it. So what we're going to do is click object. Clipping mask make. And that's going to set it as the actual background of the bulldog. And you'll notice here that, you know, you're wondering where the black went. It's up under. So if you just want to send it to the back, now you can work on the stroke or the outline that goes around the shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the fill out of this bulldog. So now you can see straight through the background and you're going to go to your appearances panel. The appearances panel, it's going to give you a fill and a stroke, and it's going to show you um, where all of your objects lie and where they have the strokes and, and, and what effects you've already put on them. It's going to show you pretty much everything they have. So you're going to bump the stroke up. I'd probably say maybe like a little over 10 because we're going to send it to the back, and it's going to make it a little bit smaller. So you'll see... I'd probably say right about there, you want a pretty big outline on the back of the shirt. So now that we have that, we're just going to right click and we're going to arrange and send it to the back. And you'll see there, now it gives you that decent line going around all over. And then at this point, we're going to show you how to make the little text box that goes in there, uh, the little frame. Pretty much all that is is a rectangle. And you want to make sure you have your Pathfinder open for this. We're going to take off the stroke for the moment. And we're going to set that rectangle to black. We can do that over here in your swatches panel. So let's make sure that this is selected. So now you're in your swatches panel. And you have a black rectangle. Then you're going to use the ellipse tool, which is pretty much, pretty much the uh, hotkey is L. So just click L and you get your ellipse tool. You're going to go to one of the corners here, highlight it, and you're going to go Shift, Alt, and you're going to drag. And that's going to make a perfect circle. You have to hold down Shift and Alt to make a perfect circle. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and size it. Probably going to be about right there. And now that we have that size, you're going to take this circle and you're going to make four of them at each corner. So all you have to do is hold down Alt again, and that's going to copy and drag it over and you're going to hold down shift at the same time that way it drags over in a straight line and I'm just zooming in here and they're going to alt drag again to that corner alt drag over to that corner All right now you have all four circles and we're going to go ahead and select all of them command G that's going to group them and then you're going to make sure that they are selected first then you're going to select the frame in the background and you're going to click the minus front option on your pathfinder panel and what that's going to do is take every shape that's on top of the shape and it's going to minus out the dead space in between them so now you see here you're left with this kind of cool little frame shape and then we're just going to take that give it a white fill make the fill white and then we're going to up the stroke which you'll notice started moving in your appearance panel. We're going to up that probably probably about 11, I'd say. Let's just keep it there. Let's keep it pretty simple. And of course, you probably want to take your stroke and throw it in the background, maybe bump it up a couple more inches. And then you're going to drag. And what this is going to do, the frame is pretty much going to cover all of these bad pattern lines that you're seeing that went in the background where they were uneven. 
that's pretty much what we're kind of trying to cover right now. Probably want to shrink that down a little bit. And now you've got this cool little frame. And what you're going to do is you're going to use your type tool. You can go up here to your panel, click type. Or you can use your keyboard shortcut, which is T. And that's going to give you the type tool. I'm going to click here and type in Southern Style or whatever you know shirt design that you want to make. So like type Southern Style. And we're just going to shift and drag. That's going to make it larger. And then we're going to type this in Georgia. So you're going to go up to character up here. And you're going to type in Georgia. And you're going to click enter. And that's going to change your font below. And most, font, uh, most illustrators come with Georgia. So if you want to use that one, that's fine. Or you can use Adobe Garamond Pro or Times New Roman. And then we're just going to hold that down. And that's going to be part of your design there. And now the last and final step to making this the t-shirt design is you're going to select here and you're going to use, you're going to click I. You're not going to click twice because that'll make it editable. What you're going to do is you're just going to click once and get you this little line going, that little blue line. And then that's, then you're going to click the command shortcut tool, which is I, and change the font to blue. And that's going to color pick the same exact blue that you're using in your artwork. You're going to hold down the drag tool here and you're going to select everything and group them. And once you've grouped them, that's pretty much it. There's your shirt design that goes on the back of the shirt. The file formats we're going to save it in will be discussed in the next video. So that's pretty much your design that goes on the back of the shirt. If you want to watch the next video, just go ahead and uh, follow the link and click below. Um, and it'll kind of explain a little bit further about how we set it up for print material and things like that and get it ready for printing. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And uh, thanks, everybody.